In this tutorial, you'll learn how to add menu options to the menu bar of your app and respond to taps on those icons, as shown over here. To get started, you should try to get two icons that you can use for your menu bar, as I have over here, the home icon and help icon. These are two icons I created in the previous tutorial on how to use Android Studio's vector assets to create images. You can follow that tutorial, the link is in the description, and the clip that I've specified is about 30 seconds long, so it's really quick to make these two icons. Or you can also use PNGs, JPEGs, those will work fine as well. But just make sure you have some images in the Jobbles folder. Now that we have that, in order to actually display menu items as shown over here with the Home and Help icon, what we're going to have to do is right-click on the Resources folder, hover over New, and then select New Android Resource Directory. Over here, you can see we have different resource types. The one that we're interested in is the menu resource type because we're trying to create a custom menu layout for our app. So select menu, click OK, and you can see it's created a new folder for us over on the left. Now I'm going to right click on that menu folder, hover over new and create a new menu resource file. And I'm going to name this file menu.xml, well, actually just menu and it'll add XML for me. So now this is what your Android Studio project should look like. We have this menu folder containing our menu.xml file. And this is where we'll define the items that we want to have in our menu. So this is the design tab and I will zoom in so it's easy to see the changes that we're making to it. So you can see right now our we don't have any menu options and we're about to change that. To create our menu items, we'll go ahead and use the item tab, a tag and then hit enter. Inside over here, we have to provide some information such as the icon we're going to be using. So the first one I want to use is the home icon. If you're using different images, you may have named it differently, but this home icon is coming from underneath my drawables folder. I also have to provide a title. That's why item is in red right now. And then I'll give it the title of home. One more thing I'm going to do is provide this um, item with an ID. And this again will be home. And right now, if you take a look at our menu, you can see that home is hidden under these three dots, this collapsed menu. And I'll explain why in a second. But first, I'll just quickly copy and paste this over here. And then, uh, because I also want to have a help icon. So I'll change the icon, title, and ID for, to the help icon, help text, and give it an ID of help. So now you can see both of them are underneath these, this collapsed menu. And in order to change that, we have to use an attribute called app show as action. But right now you can see app is in red because we don't have that namespace inside of our file. So to change that, go inside the menu tag at the top of the menu.xml file and over here type app and you can see it's providing suggestion. Hit If we hit enter, it will add the app namespace to this file. And now if we come back here and type in app, you can see there are no errors and it's providing a suggestion for app shows action. So you can see there are five options for app shows action. This basically describes when to show the, the icon, the menu option in the bar, and when to show it inside this collapsed menu over here. So some of the names are self-explanatory, like with text, if room. Um, the two important ones we're going to be using are always and never. So if we select always, that means it will always show this as an action inside of our menu bar. So it is not hidden inside of these three dots over here. So if you take a look, our help icon has show us action set to always. That's why over here in our menu, we can see the icon. Uh, we also want this to be the case for our home icon, which currently is inside this collapsed menu. That's why we'll copy this line over here and paste it inside the item for our home icon. And now if we take a look at our menu, we can see that both icons are being shown and they're, they're not hidden away in a collapsed menu. Alternatively, if we, we change this net always to never, so I'll copy and paste that over here, you can see both of them are hidden away inside of this uh, collapsed menu. And I'll set it to always for this example. Yeah, so this is the end of our XML file. We've specified the layout that we want for our menu. We have to add the back icon that you saw over here, this back icon. We have to add that inside of our main activity.java. Now inside of our main activity, in order to show the back button in our menu bar, we're going to say get support action bar and then call a method called set display home as up enabled. Inside we'll pass a boolean true. And what all this will do is basically show this icon, this back icon, next to our title on the left. Now you can see that if we run this, and I already have run it over here, 
well, it will not show us the icons in the top right corner. So the home icon and the help icon, as you can see, are missing from our app. In order to actually display those two icons, we're going to have to override a method called on option on create options menu. To override something, you can do control O and it gives you a list of methods. So if we type in on create options menu and press enter, you can see this generated this for us really quickly. Now what we actually have to do to show our menu.xml file that we created, this layout, in order to show the layout, we've got to use a class called get menu inflator. From the documentation, what menu inflator does is it instantiates menu XML files into menu objects. So you'll, you'll get a better idea of what this is once we write out the code for it. So we'll say get menu inflator, which is the menu inflator for activity. Then we'll say dot inflate. Inside over here, we'll pass in our menu.xml file we created. And then we'll pass in the menu object that we're getting from on create options menu. So once again, to explain what this does is it gets the menu inflator and it will inflate this menu object for our activity with this menu layout that we created. And that's what this line of code does over here. Now, if we go ahead and run this, you can see when we open our app, we can actually see the help icon and the home icon in the top right corner. And there they are. So we have our three icons right now. When we press them, nothing happens. To fix that, what we're going to do is implement or override a second method. And this method is called on options item selected, which as the name suggests is triggered whenever a menu item is selected. So in order to tell which item was selected, we'll use a switch, uh, switch statement. We will look at the items ID. So menu item item, this item object over here is the item that was clipped. So what we'll do is we'll check that menu items ID. And if that ID was r.id.home, which if you remember, if we go to our menu.xml file, that's the icon we gave our home icon. So that's important. This ID um, home is for our home icon. So if the item that was clicked, if that has an ID of home, then we're going to make a toast saying a uh, home icon pressed. And that's what that will do. We also want to break. There is a second case we want to consider, and that is where the the item that was clicked has an ID called help. And that's our second icon over here that we defined in menu.xml. It has an ID of help. So we're here in main activity. If that button is pressed, I'll just copy and paste that. If that menu item is pressed, we will say help icon pressed. And the last case we want to consider is if this back button is pressed. And the back button, uh, for that, we can just use a default statement. So we'll say default, and then over here, we can say back icon pressed. So all we're doing is this um, on options item selected method gives us the item, the menu item that was clicked. So it's going to be one of these three. Over here, we're looking at that items ID. If it's the, it ha if it has an ID of home, which is the ID we gave our home icon, it will make that toast. Otherwise, if it's the help icons ID, we said we defined it as help over here. It will make the toast saying help icon pressed. Otherwise, by default, that means this back icon was pressed. And that's why it will make a toast saying back icon pressed. So after running the app, you can see that when we click on the home icon, it makes a toast saying home icon pressed. When we click on the help icon, it will say help icon pressed. And when we click on the back icon, it will say back icon pressed. And of course, if you're developing an app where you want to have menu options that serve different functions, you would come inside here into the case cases and then change what's actually happening when each of these icons are pressed. But what you learned from this tutorial is how to create menu options for your Android app. In the next tutorial, we'll see how to implement a search view in our menu so that users can tap on a search icon and search for things. Until then, make sure to subscribe and see you later.